Hello, magnificent human beings. My name is Landon. Welcome to Yoga New Mexico, where we focus on empowerment, alignment, and strength. Thanks so much for being here. So this is a how-to on crescent lunges. That is the theme for the week. If you haven't subscribed, please do so already. Um, wait, if you haven't already subscribed, then please do so. That's how that should work. Anyways, so go ahead and roll out your mat or get a cup of coffee if you're just going to watch this, whatever it may be. I want to give you some uh, tips and tricks on how to go deeper in your crescent lunges and uh, really to watch for your alignment as well. So thank you so much and let's roll the intro screen. Okay, so I know you've probably done crescent lunges before, and if you have questions about it, I hope to answer some of those, and maybe you just wanna go deeper in your crescent lunges. And if that's the case, I definitely have a tip or trick for you. We'll get there. So um, let's first of all start off um, by giving you some options, right? So. Sometimes you could be in a position where down dog is actually a little hard for you. So um, starting off in just kind of like a modified situation, you're here in your crescent lunge and then, or your crescent lunge, your tabletop. And uh, you bring this left foot up in between your hands right here and then boom, crescent lunge. Modified, but still a crescent lunge. And this pose actually, even though it's a modified lunge, you can still really feel this in this front part of your hip flexor here. So just switching sides just briefly. So if you have kind of like a draw straight line from here all the way down here, then you know that you're keeping your hips square and everything is nice and straight. But the second that you start to tilt back at that torso, you're going to feel this whole front part of your hip flexor here just ignite. So that's a great tip if you want to deepen a little bit is just to come on back. So it's kind of like this nice thing, right? Where if you don't want to come into a full crescent lunge, but you still want to get some of the more deeper elements of it, you can just tilt back a little bit. Continuing on this same train of thought, if you are in your crescent lunge and you want to get a little bit deeper here, then just come on back and you're going to feel it all along that front side of your hip. So those are just a few, you know, basic tips there and the best one's coming up. So, you know, hold on for that one. But let's talk uh, a little bit about alignment specifically. So regardless of how deep you are in your crescent lunge, if you're way deep like this or if you're way back here, these principles still apply. So make sure this knee is stacked perfectly on top of your ankle. It's not in front. It's not behind. This is probably the most common uh, misalignment I would say that most people make. So just make sure your knee is stacked on top of your ankle. You don't want it bending this way or that way or you know whichever. Your foot, strong toes on the mat. They grip the mat a little bit but not like a death grip you know it's just like you feel the mat right. So strong foot and then hips here are square with the mat kind of like you know, it's the Old West and you pull out, well, it's New Mexico, it is the Old West, right? No, anyways, you pull out your guns and like they're right here or, you know, like you got two headlights on your hips shining straight in front of you. So keep that cue in mind as we talk about the back leg. So your back leg, you'll notice if these are my hips, if I start to really try to open up, my hips are going to sway back, right? So there's a difference between bringing this foot back and bringing your, hook, your, uh, your hip back as well. So if you want to deepen a little bit, then keep your hips square, but you're going to need to sink your weight 
down so that you can keep your hips square, not push this back either. So, um, also your back foot, you should be high on the back ball of that foot. And in almost every yoga posture, there's this kind of push and pull, right? Like some parts you want engaged and others you want to be relaxed as possible. So quick recap before we get to the back foot. Front toes strong. This knee on top of the ankle, right? Hips square. And then the back ball of that foot, you don't want this heel to be sagging because you're going to inadvertently bring that hip back, right? You want that uh, you want to be high on the back ball of your foot, which helps keep your hips nice and square. So, staying right here, this is your crescent lunge, and you actually gently push into the back of that foot. So, strong toes, strong back of your foot, you know, it's like you feel the mat, you feel the earth underneath you here in your crescent lunge. Arms, come on up overhead. Now, here's the kind of uh, dichotomy again, right, in our yoga postures. Um, you want to grow through your torso in your crescent lunge, but you also want to relax your shoulders down. And you relax your shoulders, you relax those muscles in your face, um, because you don't need the muscles in your face, right? How is that going to help you do your crescent lunge? Um, and I think we get so focused on like, oh, I have to do this crescent lunge just perfectly and we're all in our minds and in our heads, but um, allow some of those innate processes in your body to take over um, once you've kind of learned the, the fundamentals, right? And then um, you will be able to kind of relax a little bit more. So to keep balanced, I'm gonna switch sides here. So here in that crescent lunge and um, you lengthen through your torso, but you relax your shoulders down. So there's a big difference between, you know, between this and this. So it's real subtle, right? Like this is lifting your shoulders up, but you're like relaxing your torso versus lifting your torso and relaxing your shoulders. Okay, so that is um, the alignment portion. And now, uh, here's a good tip for coming deeper in your crescent lunge. So um, this is hard for um, people to hold for any length of time. And this is an excellent tool to use when you wanna get a lot more out of your yoga practice, right? You know, maybe you only have um, 25 minutes or like a half hour or something. Oh wait, there's a class for that. It's on Monday. Um, so yeah, I know, shameless plug, right? Um, but uh, this is a really great tool to help kind of deepen in your crescent lunge. So find yourself in plank. And go ahead and take those toes and bring them all the way up so they're in line with your fingertips. So you're setting yourself up for a really, really deep crescent lunge. So when you do this, don't cheat and bring this foot up, right? So, toes in line with your fingertips. And then envision that you have a steel rod through your hips. You can't lift your hips, you can't sink them. You can only hinge from this point. So staying right here, slowly hinge at your hips on up. And come on down. So that is an excellent way to really like fire up uh, your practice. And um, I think that's about it. 
I'm probably forgetting a couple things because as in every posture, there's a million cues and a million little things you can, you know, um, ask of um, to help bring you into better alignment. But that is it for today. Thanks so much for being here. If you have not subscribed, please do so. And if you have any comments, questions, whatever it may be, go ahead and um, hit that up in the comment box below. Otherwise, thanks for being here. Remember, you are a magnificent human being. You are in the right place, capable and strong. Namaste. Yeah.